This video is a bit of a warning and a reminder about the need to think about coordinate reference systems when you're doing spatial analysis in QGIS or any other GIS software. On my screen, I have a OpenStreetMap layer. Before I added that layer, I had a map layer and it's just got one point in it and it's for the place called Chipping Norton in England. If I look down at the bottom right, I can see my map project is in British National Grid coordinate reference system. The code for that is EPSG 27700. So the coordinate reference system here is British National Grid. The map layer for OpenStreetMap is usually in 3857, which is a global Mercator projection. So let's try something here. Let's look at the other two layers. I reprojected the dot for Chipping Norton in two different coordinate reference systems. And I did that via the toolbox and the reproject layer tool. If you search there, you'll see the reproject layer tool. Now, sometimes you'll need to do this if you want to get accurate results for your data. So let me show you. If I decide I want to draw a 500 mile buffer around Chipping Norton, I you can do it via the vector menu and geo processing tools. I usually just go to the processing toolbox and type buffer. I'll double click it and I'm going to go to the input layer. It's Chipping Norton 3857. I want to use 500 miles. So I'll change it to 500 miles. The segments, that's really about how smooth your buffer circle is. So let's type in 500 segments to make it really nice and smooth and circular. I could save the results here to my folder, but I'm not going to save them just now. I'll just run a temporary uh, buffer and the file will disappear when I shut down this project, which is fine. So I'll run that and I'll hit close. Now let's zoom there. What have we got here? Well, let me just change the colors. This is a 500 mile buffer. Uh, the coordinate reference system is 3857. So let's take a note of that and click OK. All right, so uh, that's the first one. Now, I'm not gonna say anything about the measurement because I'm gonna do another one. Let's do it for the WGS 84 one. Buffer that. Ah, so this is what you get. You get this warning sign that says it's in degrees. Now that's really important because some coordinate reference systems are measured in meters, like British National Grid or the other one I just did, the Pseudo Mercator. But some native units are in degrees. And this is a good example where you, you would need to reproject the data. So in this case, you can't, you just can't do it in, in meters or, or feet or whatever. It's degrees, and that's degrees, latitude or longitude. So it, it doesn't really allow you to do any proper analysis with this projection. So if you see this, the, the solution is to use the reproject layer tool. But let's just do mm, two degrees, 500 segments. Okay, you'll see what happens. And I'll click run, close. So we get this weird shape. It's two degrees. Uh, north and south and east and west but obviously we don't get a circle with that so let's rename this one and we'll change the symbology here okay so that's definitely not right we, and we wouldn't use that because we get the wrong results Okay, so let me just change the color for the first one to match its dot. So that's the first one. I'll do the same with the second one. So we'll change the color to match its dot. Okay, so th these are these are both ones that we did for 500 miles. But how do we know what's right? Well, let's do the same thing again, but we'll use the Chipping Norton point that is in the British National Grid coordinate reference system. So this is, the, this is the correct one for the data we're using. The projection or the, the coordinate reference systems units are in meters, so that's fine. So let's run the buffer tool. 
and same again, 500 miles. We'll do 500 segments, so we get a smooth circle. And I'm not gonna save this file, but remember you can save if you want a permanent file from your analysis. I will hit run and close. And let me change the color of this to match the point. Now, look how different this is. Let's turn the other buffers on. Now at this stage, you're thinking maybe, well, how on earth do you know which one is right? Well, often when you're doing this kind of work, you might know the area you're doing the analysis for. You won't always know. So what would I usually do in this situation? Well, in this case, uh, it's not always easy to know what to do, but the first thing you could do is look for your measure tool. In this case, I've got the map projected in CRS 27700, so it's in British National Grid. So let me just do a quick check. I'll click on the dot, I'll go to the circle. I'll change the units to miles. Okay. And okay, so on an, ellip on an ellipsoidal measurement, we're getting basically 500 miles for the circle. Okay. And also Cartesian. But with the other circle, we're getting about 90 miles that way and 138 miles that way. With the pink circle, we're getting 293 miles. Change it to ellipsoid, 300 miles. Okay, so not great. So let's close that. So well, just that was just a quick thing I usually do just to check the measurement. And of course, if we remember the blue circle anyway, I, I couldn't do that in miles. That was only possible in degrees. So I didn't know off the top of my head how many degrees would roughly equal the right distance. So this blue one is nonsense. So we can disregard that anyway. Then what I'll usually do is just use a bit of common sense really, just to, to check my results against something we can easily look at online. So I'll pull in a web browser. And now I'm looking at Chipping Norton. There. Oxfordshire. Let's right click on Chipping Norton and click measure distance. And let's go just to beyond the north of Scotland and we get five, just about 500 miles just off the north coast of Scotland. And how far south can we go to get 500 miles? We get to the south of France. Not all the way to the south, but roughly. Now, does that compare with our circle? Let's have a look. Let's zoom out a little bit. Yeah, so that line in this case takes us to Bordeaux, just south of Bordeaux. If I zoom to my Google map here, 500 miles gets us just to the south of Bordeaux. And because these things are they're always a little bit tricky. I just like to use multiple things to sense check my results, just to be sure. So I already know this data for Chipping Norton is in the correct coordinate reference system. I already know that I did the analysis correctly, and I already know that the other ones are incorrectly projected. So what's the message here? It really is when you're doing any kind of analysis, any kind of spatial analysis using distance, you need to be sure that the data you're doing it on has the correct coordinate reference system. Now, in this case, for a dot in Britain, that would be British National Grid. If you're not entirely sure what to use when you're reprojecting, then if you go to reproject layer, as you're doing that, there's a little button you can click to select CRS. And in the search box, let me see. If you search for a country, for example, Australia or France, there's so many different ones that you can use. You, if you're, And if you're not sure, it's just useful to do a little bit of research online about which CRS you should be using. And this is really where you just need to put some thought into it. 
it's easy sometimes just to click, click, click and do some analysis without really thinking about the validity of the results. So when you're doing any kind of spatial analysis, make sure that you're using a suitable coordinate reference system. And if you are looking to read up more on this, there's tons of stuff online, but here's one example and the link is in the description of a piece you can read to find more information about coordinate reference systems. But don't worry, everybody is confused about this from time to time. Uh, it just requires a little bit of thought.